Go. You are back with Lonzo Live right here at Lonzo Land Studios. The show is called Not Without Alonzo After the Book. They're sponsoring the show. To my left, we have the hip hop attorney, the car, and we are talking about terrorist threats and how they affect your freedom, folks. Um, we got a video right now that's up on the screen with Charlie Murphy on it. And he was talking a little static to somebody. Yeah. <clears throat> As with every show, you know, we try to, um, you know, we, we support the material that we discuss with, with video clips from uh, comedy, television, music, movies. Uh, examples of, of the topic. Right. The topic is, is criminal threats today. This clip is a, it's, it's a hilarious clip. This is a clip of uh, Charlie Murphy when he was working on the Dave Chappelle show. This is an example of what a real criminal threat looks like in the real world. You know, so <laughs> Dow Stingley was having to come to this restaurant we were in, and in that time he was a celebrity, and he still hey, he had a whole bunch of girls with him, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, my brother was in there with the tight leather on and all that. <laughs> Dow Stingley... You know what I'm saying? He was he couldn't move, man. You know what I'm saying? He's over here. So just, let me give you an idea of what was going on. We at our table chilling, right? Now the girls with Stingley, they was paying a little bit too much attention to my brother. So we didn't call it hating back then. When Stingley started hating, man, the motherfucker, he's like this. Fuck Eddie Murphy. Fuck that punk ass nigga. Shit. I got money. Fuck y'all keep looking at this nigga for. Fuck him. Fuck Buckwheat. Niggas corny anyway. I don't like Beverly Hills Cop. It's going on and on and on and on. Loud, man. Like the whole restaurant can hear it. No one is saying anything to Daryl because, you know, as a, you know, as a culture, you know, as a society, it's kind of wrong to step to this guy. You know? But, you know, like I told you, man, I make my own rules, man. Fuck that, man. If you're a talking head motherfucker and you acting like you forgot that that's what you are, I'm going to hold a mirror up and let you see what's going on. I went over there. I told him, I said, look, man, you want me to flip your fucking chair over? Huh? And stomp your mouth? Because that's the only thing that's moving. You want to lose that? Huh? And he looked me in the eye and he seen that I was, I was that, that serious. I was going to flip that motherfucker's chair over and stomp his mouth, man. And he, he got horrified. I said, I'm going back over to my table. If I hear one more peep out of you, man, when I come back over here, I'm going to fuck you up, man. Now shut the fuck up. <laughs> and, you know, then his eyelids was trembling because that's the only thing that can move. This motherfucker. And he's sitting there and shit, you know what I'm saying? So I go back to my seat and I sit down. My brother was like, yo, man, wait, that was messed up, man. I said, you hear him saying anything wrong about you anymore? Okay. All right, y'all. There you go. Yeah. Uh, an <laughs> official criminal threat made <laughs> live by, by Charlie Murphy. Yeah, it's a, <clears throat> a very uh, entertaining story he tells. The thing about this clip is that he's telling a story that more than likely took place in the 1980s <clears throat> before this criminal threat statute was on the books. Uh, so he wouldn't be charged retroactively for a criminal threat. But if that were to take place today, right. in the year 2015, you have the elements of the criminal threat charge in that story. Because all you got to do is convey words to a person that are threatening, and then that person has to take the threat seriously and become fearful. And that's exactly what happened in that clip. If that were to happen in 2015... That would be a criminal threat charge. More than likely, that would probably be filed, filed as, a, as a felony. Uh, that's my opinion, uh, particularly threatening somebody who's in a wheelchair. Because he was talking major shit about actually going and doing some bodily harm to this man. Yeah. And I can understand. <laughs> um, I, I can, uh, you know, that's what we did back then. You know, it was a different time. And it's real hard to, uh, to grow out of that. I mean, because, you know, if somebody says something to you, says something to you, or diss you in any way from a fashion, I'm going to fuck you up, okay? And you can mean it, say it with conviction, and nine times out of ten, it, uh, it was an idle threat in some cases. In some cases, it wasn't. So, you know, it's, uh, 
it's a different day and time, folks. So understand that the mistakes we were allowed to make as kids, we can't, you know, kids can't make anymore. The mistakes that we, you know, the things that we did, we got away with. I talk about it all the time how, you know, I got caught in situations, uh, got slapped on the wrist and went home. Whereas um, uh, nowadays, you don't go home. You know, you don't go home after doing. You go to jail. You go to jail. You go to juvenile hall. Oh, you got to call <laughs> the hip hop attorney. Yeah. Uh, you know what's crazy? Uh, you know, and just to you know to kind of put this into context, um, you know, we're doing this show because, first of all, we love hip hop, um, but we we want to hold hip hop accountable for. The misdeeds of hip hop. That's one way to look at it. We, we believe that the music has some issues uh, that a lot of people, a lot of our young people, have been led into the criminal justice system, trying to live up to uh, the the lifestyle, the lyrics, the ideas that are promoted and, and how about, how glamorized about, in hip hop. How about say they've been herded into the herded, yeah, herded into the criminal justice system by trying to live up to bullshit. Yeah, so you can say I can say that you can't say that. Yeah, well, I, I agree with you. Thank you. And and on the show we talk about a lot of different things, but we always try to relate it back to the music because, you know, that's 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 pretty much our starting point. Unlike the mu- unlike anything else, vi- video video games they have their own small effect. Uh, movies have their effect as well. Yes, television shows. Television yes. shows, but again, because music is a repetitive and constant reminder or a constant sense of desensitization? Desensitization, you got it. Desensitization, (laughs) okay. That it has much more of an effect on, because I know for, I've seen it, I've seen it happen too many times, and it happens so subtly, you don't even realize it. And, you know, for a simple example, people... You would think you would think kids kids think weed is actually legal in California. Yeah, you know yeah. they think weed is legal. Okay, yeah, you can get a car and you can smoke it at your house, whatever the case may be. But it's not legal. It's far from it. Okay, but based on the frequency in which it's talked about and it's constantly being smoked and you see it everywhere, and it's in it's in every club now. It's not even an issue. You would think it was legal, but if you didn't know. Uh, you, you would th- actually believe it was legal, but it's not. And mm-hmm. these are some of the things that you have. We, we're trying to expose in our, sh- our our show here today. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, every day, people get arrested for possession of marijuana, possession of marijuana for sale. So those statutes are still on the books. People are still being arrested and criminally prosecuted. You're right. You can get a medical marijuana recommendation that allows you to use it for medicinal purposes, but if you don't have that recommendation. Or if you exceed the limits of that recommendation with your marijuana, you can still be arrested and prosecuted. But um, if we can, we got a, a, a an example from a hip hop song. One of my favorite artists. Who you got? Uh, is Jada Kiss. Jada Kiss from the Locks. Uh, I would. I mean, he's a lyricist, man. He's been putting it down for a long time. Uh, I would say he he's on my. My top ten list. I think you had a window open already, but we had it queued up. Uh, so yeah, pause that one. But just you could be the best in your house. For another example, another example of of a criminal threat. Uh, if we can go to the forty-one second mark on that video. Forty-one seconds. This is a a song called Checkmate. When he and Fifty Cent were having their feud several years ago. This is a diss song he made. And uh, there's a criminal threat in there, if we could play it. Really dope song, too. Wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah, pretty pretty dope. But that the line that he got in there, because uh, 50's claim to fame was that he was shot nine times. Remember when he first came out? Yeah, that was his big thing. And, and here Jadakiss is firing back at him. Uh, you ain't get shot again yet, so what your next album going to be about? <laughs> But the the part that the line that actually could be a criminal threat is uh, the the fellas I'ma send to do it ain't gonna miss. Right. Now if Fifty took that as a as a threat and became fearful, he could have called the police and and 
may have been able to, to get a prosecution. And, and, and for listeners who think that a criminal prosecution cannot arise out of something that someone says in a hip-hop song, they may want to check that segment right. we did. I think it was either episode two or episode three, I think it was three. where we currently have a young brother down in San Diego being prosecuted for attempted murder charges based on based 25 years yeah 20 he's, well yeah facing 25 to life based on his his songs right but there's no allegation that he ever attempted to murder anyone but the the district attorney is alleging that his music encouraged other people to do it so yeah that, I, and that that's really scary to me and if I was a hip hop artist I would be paying close attention to that case we're going to have to revisit that maybe in the next uh, episode we'll get an update on the on the San Diego case where young black man being charged with attempted murder wow based on his hip hop songs yet there's no allegation that he attempted to murder anyone all right folks uh we're about ready to wrap the show up already man really it's been an hour already time guys. flew it's hey, can I ask you a question before, right quick? Before, before, before. Okay, you got a book out. Yes, I do. And and you're well known in the community. You and I are friends. We hang out everywhere I go, everywhere we go. People are, is, is that Lonzo? <laughs> 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 and they know you. They knew you before the book came out. Yeah, I've been around for a minute, man. Yeah, but but your your fame has increased recently. Partially because you were portrayed in the movie this past summer. Straight out of Compton, man. They played they, they played me uh they played me as a hating club owner. I think we got a call before we go. Hold on there. Okay. Let's see if this is going to work to the sign. Hello. We, we got sound there? I'm going to call you. No, we do not have Hold sound. Daryl Williams. Can you put him on How speaker? you doing there, Doc? Hey, what's up, Big D? <laughs> Man, we trying to get you on the air, Doc. We doing our, our first show here at the house. We got a couple of te- technical difficulties. I got you on the phone, but I don't have you on the speaker right now. But uh, I know it's all love anyway. Put him on speakerphone. This is. Can you put him on speakerphone? I know I'm saying put him on speakerphone. Okay. What what you what you got about that on the school closing? Can you put him on speakerphone? Oh, hold on, hold on. Let's try something else. Hold on, hold on, Daryl. The speakerphone. Is there a speaker output on the handset? Oh, here we go. Big D. Can you hear me? I hear you. Okay. Go ahead. Well, you know what? I think you did the right thing by shutting the school down. I do too. You know, uh, you know, there's some people now, you know, Monday morning, Monday morning quarterbacking about the whole situation. Well, about security in this country, because I do security, and we 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 real lax the days ago on security. Okay. I I mean, if they would have sent some kids to school, something would have happened at one of those schools. Now, the parents and everybody pointing the fingers at you know the officials. Why didn't you shut the school down? Right. Right. You're absolutely correct. So nothing did happen. So now you got people, oh, my work, I miss work, <laughs> you know. But we, we, we're, we're living in a world where this is going to be the norm. Ain't that crazy? You're, you're going to be sitting at McDonald's, and, and LAPD going to roll up with the bomb squad. Oh. And say, oh, wait, we got a bomb scared here. Wow. <laughs> now... I always tell, tell people him when to they turn cry down about his set. and cry about certain things in our country. You go to Israel. Okay. I've been there four times. Okay. There's well, metal well, detectors at every entrance. At the mall, at McDonald's, everywhere. Because that's the type of country it turned into. They still have their freedom, but they have metal detectors set up. To wow. ensure sure. Sure. Hey, 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 Big D, turn, turn your phone down a little bit. Uh, turn down your uh, your TV a little bit. Oh, your computer. Okay. We got a little feedback. Oh, well, I'm on my I'm on my cell phone. Okay, okay. Go I'm ahead. on my cell phone. Go ahead. Do your thing. Yeah, but I mean, like I said, I, I think they did the right thing, shut down the schools. You know, be safe and sorry. And and obviously, they thought the threat was credible enough for them to do to to do that. That's true. That's very true. You know. I mean, even though New York got something similar, 
but theirs were typed out totally different. Okay. You know, it wasn't the same message that we got on our end. So our people felt it was safe not to send the kids to school. Okay. All right. It's gonna happen again, Lonzo. It's I sure, have, I sure hate to see that, but you're probably right. Doc. That's the, that's the cold part about it. You probably right. That's the cold part about it. You ain't even know. You, you know, you can't predict the future, but just knowing the game and seeing how security has um, and situations have evolved over the years and how security has become more and more important, I can see it. You, you, you know your game. I know you're probably right. And, and you know, we, we live in this country where, you know, we got to be po- politically correct on everything. The criminals got more rights. Right. Than, <laughs> than, than the authority. Right. That's true. I mean, even the street criminals and the terrorists. I mean, you know, they were mad when they were waterboarding the terrorists in the Bush campaign. They were mad how they were treating the terrorists. Yeah, we're not treating them uh, with dignity. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see what they doing to us? Yeah, right. But our heads off over here. You know, so when they come over here, they live in, you know, in, 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 in just in, in lavish prison system, get treated nice. And see, the, the CIA... And the other authorities can't question these people the way they want to to get the right information. They go in there, you know, pussyfooting around, giving them suckers and Dr. Pepper instead of, <laughs> instead of you know, really, you know what I'm saying, really doing what they're supposed to do to, to get these questions answered. All right. So, so I mean, you know, they just uh, they took a lot away from, from the, the authorities that do that type of job. And, and, you know, like, they used to can just listen in on phone calls. They can't do that no more. All right, I heard it. They, they came look, they came look at a, 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 at a, a suspected uh, terrorist Facebook page. I mean, I'm sorry, if you want to come into the country and you got to you, plot, plot the application, you can't, they can't check their Facebook page. Wow. They, 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 they hands are tied. This country here, living on this uh, uh, freedom of speech thing, but... I think when our forefathers made that freedom of speech law, they didn't intend for it to go this far. No, Facebook wasn't here yet. Yeah, Facebook wasn't here. They wasn't burning the American flag back then. Right. Oh, that's freedom of speech. They right. can burn the American flag. It's no, oh my God, this country screwed up, bro. <laughs> All right. Big D, we got to roll, baby. I see you at the gym. Well, much love to you, my brother. Much love. That's and my boy, Big D. Big D, the bodyguard to the stars, and he's straight out of Compton, folks. See you at the gym, Doc. See you at the gym. One love. All right, one love. All right, y'all. That's my boy, Big D, as I said before. Big D is everybody's bodyguard. You, I see some of his pictures on his phone, and he is, uh, he's the man. He go to the gym. We go to the gym together. He pick up half the gym. You can't, you can't pick up, you can't pick up weights. Why he's in the gym? Cause ain't nothing left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Okay. This is the we wrapping up this show today, folks. If you didn't get a chance to call in, I apologize. I apologize. Uh, we'll, yeah, we're still trying to smooth out the technical this is our aspects. Little, our first, so our, future shows will run smoother, no yeah, doubt about it. This is our maiden run yeah. here at Lonzo Land Studios, the Lonzo the Lick Media Center, and uh, we got a couple of bugs we got to work out. We had to do a show. I'll be back Thursday. The car may sit with me. I'm not sure. He, I'm going to come back Thursday. I'm bringing back Issues in the Hood, and uh, I'm quite sure we'll have all our bugs worked out by Wednesday, by Thursday, folks. Okay. Be back at 6 o'clock Wednesdays, just like I used to do back on uh, on Channel 3. So, stick around. Tell a friend. And I was back on TV. Oh, Lord. And get, him, get his full of camera and some lights. In the meantime, folks, I'm out of here, and it's going down like four flat tires. I want to say... Uh, the car. See you later, Doc. Oh yeah, yeah. If anybody need legal advice, two one three eight five eight two six nine eight is my number. Feel free to call or text me. Check out my book online, LonzoWilliams.com. If you go to my website, the book and the DVD is twenty dollars plus shipping. I will autograph a copy of it and mail it to you myself. You will have my DNA on the cover. In the meantime, thank my boy Unknown working working these bugs out. I got Josh in the studio interning. Much love to everybody out there, the CPT and beyond. Shamika, thank you for letting them know we on the air, baby. We love you, and we'll see you next week. In the, oh, I'm seeing you Thursday, y'all. Issues in the Hoods coming back Thursday, 6 o'clock, right here at Lonzo Land Studios on Ustream Media. Brian, don't be hating. Don't be, don't be working my nerves. I'll call you back, Doc. Peace. <laughs>